believe that in life there are some weights uh, that, that we're holding on to that aren't necessary, that have kind of weighed us down, that we don't have to continue to hold on to. They're actually preventing us from really stepping and walking into the fulfillment that God is calling us to walk into. And it's just kind of pressing down that weight. Have any of you just felt that sense before in life? Like, why am I just experiencing this, just this immense pressure all around me at all times? Am I the only one that ever feels that way? Does anybody ever feel like you're walking through that? You know, and so when we were looking at this series, Travel Light, uh, we felt the Lord was speaking to us that this season of our church, in this time, we're, we're praying and believing this is going to be a season of refreshing and restoration. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Right? That, that we're going to walk into a season here as the church where God is going to, there are going to be some things in our life, some weight, some baggage, things that are holding us down that the Lord is going to remove from our lives, that we're going to lay down at his feet and we're going to experience real freedom in Jesus. We're going to walk into that freedom. And I believe there's many people in here today that you can relate to that and say, that, that sounds amazing, but what are these weights? And what are some of these things that we hold on to? One of the things that I'm going to focus on today in week one uh, is the weight of worry. Okay, the weight of worry or an, an, an ungodly spirit of fear. Now, if we're all being honest, let's just, let's just be real. How many of us at once, you don't have to raise your hand, okay? You don't have to raise your hand. We've experienced... The weight of worry, all of us have, right? At one point or another, we've experienced the weight of ungodly fear that's crept in and begin to take hold of our minds, right? And that's what I'm talking about here today is we're we're talking about that kind of fear. Now, what I want to kind of set this up from the the very beginning is I I want you to look at this from the right lens here today. And so you you have two different approaches here, okay? You you have what we'll call um, just concern, and then a spirit of fear, okay? So let's kind of categorize these right from the get-go. So as we look at this, uh, we're looking at this clear-minded, okay? So let me give you an example, kind of break these two down of what I'm talking about. When I talk about just concern versus an ungodly fear or an ungodly worry in our lives. So um, say, how many of you have kids? How many of you have kids that have their license already? They're driving, yeah, you've gone through that already. You've gone through that, that season of, oh no, you, you really want to start doing this, huh? <laughs> okay, here's the keys. Y'all sit next, next to you, you know, the passenger seat. Mom and dad, I'm, I, it was, me and Hallie were kind of talking about this the other day, but it's crazy to think. My, my little one, Arden, and then the, the little, little one, all the way down to, to Reese and all the, all the ones in between, all one day be sitting in the passenger seat and they'll be driving, right? And that terrifies me, Okay. <laughs> Like, what? You're going to get behind the wheel and you're going to get on. I mean, I'm driving down 45 thinking about this, you know, going, no way. This is why we're moving back to Brenham, right? We need, I need those, I need those, I need those uh, small country roads to teach my kids how to drive. That's where I learned how to drive. So, but, but okay, parents. So we know as parents, there are things, many things that as a parent, you can worry about, right? Let me, let me explain the difference between just concern versus ungodly fear. Let's say your kids get their driver's license. They go out and um, they go to a friend's house, okay? And uh, their curfew is, let's say, nine o'clock, okay? And they're, it, you, you look down at your phone, it's 10 o'clock. You're trying to get a hold of them. You can't, you can't get a hold of them, okay? Now, in that moment, what's setting in is what? Concern. At, at 10 o'clock, you don't, you know, you don't hear from your kids. You're trying to call them. They can't get a hold of them. You have all the reason in the world as a parent, as a mom and dad, to be what? Very concerned and go, where are you at? What's going on? Uh, Oftentimes, just concern is going to lead to what? It's going to lead to some kind of action, right? You're going to like get in the car. I'm going to go find them. I'm going to hunt them down, right? Like I will get to the bottom of this. We're going to find out what's going on. It leads to an action. Okay, let, let let me play this back a little bit of a different way now. Now you look down at your watch, different scenario, 903, okay, they haven't, uh, they haven't called you or anything. And immediately your thought is, oh, what if they got in an accident? They're in a ditch somewhere. Okay, you see the difference? There's like an immediate go-to worst case scenario habit created, right? And if we're being honest, for many of us, like we have, we've done that, Right? 
we go to that worst case scenario, oh no, right? This is surely what happened. And then we start thinking and we start dwelling on it. We really start inviting those thoughts in. Or what if this happened? Or what if that happened, right? And all these anxious thoughts start flooding our minds. And we start going down this path in our minds where we're thinking of all these, you know, all these things, right? And there's a difference between allowing like a spirit of fear to just totally take over in your life versus saying, no, I have a just concern about this. And I'm going, so I'm going to, you know, take some action. And here's the difference between uh, concern and, and fear. Concern will prompt you to take an action. Ungodly fear cripples you. You don't think clearly because your mind is racing and you're thinking of all these, oh no, the sky is falling. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And that's immediately where our mind goes, right? So this this happens in life over time. I remember um, we taught on this, you know, uh, about a year ago about how, you know, our minds have these neural pathways. These neural pathways that go through our mind are really, it's, it's how we, what leads us to make the decisions we make, okay? And so uh, your neural pathways, the ones in, within your mind that you, that, that travel the most, okay? Think of it like water in the ground. It takes the path of least resistance. It's kind of the same way in your mind. As you continue to go back and go back and go back to that way of thinking, you basically entrench that way of thinking in your mind and you create that habit to continue on, right? Of, of thinking, that way of thinking. And so when it's always fear first, it's always like, oh no, worst case scenario, this is what's going on. We create a habit of always going there. And so it starts with, with a situation and then that becomes a habit where we're just always thinking that way, right? You know, the Bible talks about Uh, Do not be conformed by the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And in some ways, this is kind of how our minds can be wired. And when we really think like the world, we really do go to like, oh no, surely something bad is happening right now. Because that's really how the world thinks. Something creeps into our mind. Oh, this is worst worst case scenario, right? And we we go down that trail in our way of thinking. But God is not calling us to live with a spirit of fear. How many of you know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? And so here's kind of what happens. And I, I brought this, I like doing little illustrations, but what happens is, so it starts off with one thing. And it's like, you know, the economy, inflation. Oh my gosh, you've been to the grocery store. Oh, I, don't, I, I sure hope I can keep my job. So, some fear is you, you fear of, uh, of not getting what you want and some fear is fear of losing what you have, right? Oh no, look at the economy. Look at the way things are going right now. And then before you know it, you, let, you pick something else up because we created this habit. This is how we think. Like we think, okay, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, oh no, oh no, oh no, right? And it's like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna meet the right person, you know? <laughs> I've been waiting, Lord, where are they? You haven't sent them my way. Right? I go to all the church services. I even go to the, the Wednesday night Bible studies. Like I'm there to mingle. And I don't, I just can't. You know, and and then it's like, okay. And then another fear creeps in, right? And we just, oh, well, let me go ahead and throw that one on. <clears throat> and then something happens and you're like, oh no, let me let me check WebMD. <laughs> yeah. You know, gotta, gotta make sure, gotta make sure WebMD. And then you read WebMD and it's like, oh, I have a pain in my right, the right cheek. Oh, it says I'm going to die in two days. You know, it's like, oh, you don't know what's going on. And then, and then you're like, okay, you grab this one. Oh, <clears throat> Here, here's another fear. And before you know it, you're kind of walking around in life just carrying these weights that are fear, right? We're holding on, we're gripping onto things because we've allowed a spirit of fear to capture us. This is what it looks like to have a spirit of fear. Have you ever tried to, uh, well, I was going to say, have you ever tried to take a nap? Like while holding, we, we would need prayer at the end of service if that was the case. Uh, you can't do anything carrying all of this. Have you ever tried to walk into a grocery store and you're just carrying a whole bunch? You feel that weight. This is what it looks like to have a spirit of fear. Many of you, you have kids here today. You're like, this is what it looks like getting in the car pretty much every, <laughs> every time. Try to, try to go anywhere right? It feels like that. Yes. All the moms in here said amen to that, right? But we're walking around in life 
And, and it starts, here's the thing. We're holding on to these, these things that are unnecessary weights that we carry because we've created this form, this habit of how we, how we think. And so it just continues to accumulate. It doesn't start like this. It just slowly gets to this point, right? We, we, don't, just, we don't just start this way. It's like we just kind of pick up one thing after another after another. And it's, it's how the enemy works. He's, he's, you know, he's trying to sneak these thoughts in there in our, in our minds and really get us to be gripped by a spirit of fear. And so before you know it, this starts affecting all your relationships. Because everything you try to do and everywhere you try to go, you got all this baggage you're carrying, all these weights that you're carrying with you. Some of this, some of this luggage here, you didn't even pick up yourself. Somebody gave it to you. And then you were like, okay, yeah. And you held on grip tight. If we're not careful, parents, we can hand some of this to our kids at an early age. And then they start thinking, oh, this is just how you respond in life. You just, when a trial shows up, you go fear because they see what mom and dad does, right? You know, that's how we respond. No, we don't respond by fear. We respond by faith. Amen. Not fear. But this is what it looks like. And this is, Wow, a lot of people are living their life. A lot of Christians are living right now like this, day in and day out. And then we, 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 we wonder, we're like, why am I feeling this weight? Yeah. And it started with something so small and it just continued to accumulate. But here's the good news. I want you to know the good news here today. No matter what, no matter what you picked up, no matter what fear triggers you've had, no matter the things that you picked up in life, no matter what somebody else has put on you that you've grabbed a hold of, you have the ability to let it go. Yes. You have the ability to put it down, right? Yes. And so you begin to let these things go. How? How do, you, how do you let it go? It's a trust. What are you dependent on? Are you dependent on your own understanding or are you dependent on the Lord's? Lean not on your own understanding, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Amen. So what am I trusting in? What am I truly putting my faith in? What am I running to? And we start to let things go. In Jesus' name, and we drop it. We drop one after the other. I don't need that fear anymore, right? Because I know where it comes from. It doesn't come from God, so I don't want it. If it doesn't come from God, then I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm not going to give the enemy, look, and then it tries to roll back and into your life. And you're like, stay back, right? I'm not going to give the enemy territory in my mind, and I'm not going to dwell on things that are not from God. That's right, it says in Philippians, uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding and guard your hearts in your minds in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to talk about what we're thinking about. Are we focusing on good things? Are we focusing on reputable things? What are we thinking about? Are we thinking about, oh no, oh no, here it comes again. And here's the deal. We start dropping things. We start letting things go. And I talked to somebody at the end of the last service and they said, and this was so good. And I said, I'm going to use this in my, my, my message. Thank you for coming and, and, and sharing that with me. But then we end up holding on. A lot of times we, we lay all this down and then there's that one thing that we don't let go of. We're like, nope, you're going to stay with me because I get comfortable carrying this bag, right? Because I'm not used to to living without that baggage. If you're not careful, fear can become your identity. We take it into everything we go into. And so it's like, well, I just hold on to it. It's not that I don't want to be free, but it's just what I know. It's kind of like the Israelites when they contemplated on going back to Egypt because it's what they knew. But God was calling them to something higher. And in the same way, I believe the Lord is calling us into something higher when it comes to fear. We don't have to continue holding on to those things. And we need a transformation to take place in our lives where we lay it all at the feet of Jesus, right? And that transformation that takes place in our life by the renewing of our mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, meaning we need God's word to rewire the way we think, okay? We need his word to shape how I think. I'm not gonna allow circumstances. I'm not gonna allow social media. I'm not gonna allow news outlets to shape how I think. We're gonna allow God's word to shape how we think, amen. amen. There's so much worry, there's so much fear. 
And it's because we have grips on things we haven't let go of, that God is calling us to let go of. But the incredible thing is, and the good news is, you have the ability to let go. You don't have to carry what other people have put on you. You don't have to carry what you've picked up. In Jesus' name, you can say, no longer. Holy Spirit, you can ask him for help. Holy Spirit, I need you to help me. Let go of this, this thing that has just, you know, racked my mind, this thing that has just held on to my life, and I just can't seem to shake it. And we ask him for that help. We lean into him. And it's a total trust. It's total dependence. And so <clears throat> here's what I want us to look at here today. Matthew chapter 6. Actually, before we go to Matthew chapter 6, let me, let me read to you Matthew uh, chapter 11. As this is, this is really foundational for this whole series that we're in here today. So Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Listen to this. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. This is Jesus. Listen to this invitation. He says, come to me. All who labor, labor and are heavy laden. Anybody can relate with that? <sighs> right? And what does he say? And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That right there just ministers to me. How many of us, we just need rest for our souls? Just an uneasiness that's been going on, Right? We need to rest from our souls. That only comes from Jesus. That's the only place we can get it, right? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, the, the yoke was often used as a metaphor in Judaism to represent the law. And Jesus says what? He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. This is an invitation from Jesus. And some of us, we just need to hear this from the start here today. Is like, we just need to take a step in faith toward Jesus and trust him with it. Whatever it is that we're going through, whatever we're facing, to just say, Lord, I trust you with this. I'm not going to start in doubt and I'm not going to start in fear. I'm going to choose faith and I'm going to choose to trust you and believe you in this season, this thing that has captured me, a spirit of fear, whatever it is. I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to trust you in it. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, listen to what Jesus says. He's talking, this is during the Sermon on the Mount, okay? And something that he shares here. He says, therefore I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and our body more than clothing? Notice he starts by saying, therefore I tell you. Remember what we learn at church is when we read the Bible, whenever we see therefore, we always need to backtrack. And you ask yourself, what is therefore, therefore? Right? What, what's it there for, right? In light of this, therefore. This is the importance of, re we read scripture, you know, in context here. And so verse 24, what is he saying right before this? He says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. So he's, he's talking about you can't serve God and money. Uh, you can't have money as master or you're going to despise God. And, and if you have, you, you can't serve two masters, right? And so it's out of that, he says, therefore, I tell you, don't be anxious about your life. In other words, if you serve money, your lot in life is to be anxious about your life. Why? Because when your expectations are tied to material things, you're going to be let down and disappointed. Don't be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. He's talking about physical needs. Now, remember, he's also talking to, uh, to an audience here that they would have all the reason in the world to worry, right? They worried about, hey, if, if we could starve to death if we don't have our crops, if we don't harvest our crops, we could starve to death. If it's not a good year, right, we won't have money. Nobody's going to help us out, like, you know, giving clothes away was not a, that was not a thing that was done. Everybody was like all for themselves, right? It was tough. It was challenging. So these people that he's talking to, they're hearing that and they're like, don't worry about, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you will eat. <laughs> Excuse me? We worry every year about what we're going to eat. And that's really what they would have been thinking, right? And he goes on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? 
Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? I love what Jesus does. He points to creation. And you got to put yourself in their situation. They'd have been going, what in the world? What in the world? And he says, look at the birds of the air. Right? They just, have you ever seen a bird up at 3 a.m. going, you know, rubbing their wings together? Oh, you know, like, I sure, sure hope there's, man, do you see, see the economy? I sure hope there's not a shortage of worms, you know? We're, we don't know what we're going to, we don't, we don't know what we're going to do. We don't know if we're going to make it. Oh my goodness. And twigs have been hard to come across, you know? You just, you don't see them like you used to. Have you seen the way things are going? It's challenging, right? You don't see them do that, right? They're flying around and they're having a good time and, right? They're singing, they're doing their thing, right? You don't, you don't see them up stressing. And what, is, what does Jesus say? He says, look at them. They don't sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? You and I are created in the image of God. There's more of a value in us than a bird, right? We are more valuable than a bird, okay? Um, Now, (laughs) I'm not even going to that line of thinking because there's, there's all sorts of of, of, of ditches people get into. Some people, some people love animals more than people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and nothing, nothing wrong, nothing against the animals, right? But, but, but listen, there's, there's literally religions about this that are created, okay? Worship of animals, literally holding animals, you know, to this, to this high, you know, you know, value over human beings, right? So, um, Jesus is making the point, look at the birds of the air, they neither sow or reap, yet your heavenly father feeds them and are you not of more value than they? Do you know your value? If he feeds the birds of the air, he's going to provide. This is a trust. You hear what I'm saying? This is, a, this is a trust, right? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Can, can we add any? Is there any value by worrying? Like, has worry ever paid a bill? Last time I checked, no, right? Has, has worry ever solved a problem and, you know, brought us peace? Has, has worry ever removed anxiety from your life? Has worry made your bank account grow? Right? Has worry ever cured a disease? No. What, what, so there was a, there was a study done in Penn State that I've, recently saw. Um, and they, they took these students and they, they told them, okay, over the next 30 days, once you write now to document, realistically, your fears over these next 30 days and what you fear could happen. And they weren't these crazy big fears necessarily, but some of them were. And they were like, okay, over the next 30 days, realistically, these are the things that we are fearing right now. We worry could happen. Um, so they documented those down. And then uh, 30 days goes by and they go to these students and they ask them, you know, did it come to pass? Did it happen? 92% of the students in the study said, no, didn't even happen. The thing they were worried about. 8% said, oh yeah, it actually came to pass, right? Here's what's interesting about that. We worry about things that don't ever happen. We spend countless hours, ah, oh no. And then we're like all happy because, oh, it didn't happen. Oh, cool. Well, well, cool. My day just got better, right? But it's like, it, it doesn't happen, right? Now, it's not say that, it, it, you know, in this study in particular, it was 8%, right? What's interesting is 8% of the time it did happen. I can tell you this, that when you live in worry and fear, 100% of the time, it'll, it'll rob your peace. Amen. 100% of the time, it will steal your peace. So it's not like we're adding value. It's not benefiting us to worry. Jesus is saying, we, you don't add an hour to your life. It's not like you're gaining anything by this. You don't profit from worry. So if you don't profit from it, then the, the real question we have to ask ourselves is, why do we do it? And then you peel the layer back a little bit more and then go, where does it even come from? Because we know that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. 
So where does the spirit of fear come from? Well, if it comes from the enemy, then the obvious question is, do I want to focus on enemy thoughts or do I want to focus on what my heavenly father says about me? If you start to look at this from a high level, because in the moment, you feel what you feel, right? You're in the weight of it, the thick of it. But if you start looking at this from a high level, you're like, yeah, if you, know, if, if you look at it from that perspective, it's a very simple way to look at it, but it's like, if, if it's the enemy that's trying to get me down that track of thinking, that way of thinking, then why would I concede any of my mind to that? Why would I give attention to those things? Now, again, I'm just gonna highlight what we talked about at the beginning. Remember, there's a difference between just concern and ungodly fear. So what we're not saying here is like, you just live this life like, oh, you know what? I'm just kind of like, I'm never concerned about anything at all. I'm just kind of, you know, just walking through life with zero concerns ever. Come on. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying here this morning is when you allow that to become a part of your life and we're gripped by a spirit of fear. And this happens for many Christians. Again, it's, it's one, I believe it is one of the ways that Satan uses and likes to use the most to prevent people from really walking out the calling God has put on their life is just to lay a spirit of fear on them and really just create that habit to prevent them from doing the things God is calling them to do. That's, that's the design of it. And so <clears throat> he goes on, are you not of more value than they? And, and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour of your life? And why are you anxious about clothing? He goes on and talks about the lilies of the field. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven... Another translation just says Texas. That's the Texas standard version. Uh, Thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Again, he's pointing to creation. He's like, if I clothe the lilies of the field, what is he pointing to? Are you of more value than they? Do we know our value? Right? Do we know that we're valued by God? That he's going to take care of us. That is a trust and a dependence, though, church, that we have to get to, where we know we have a confidence. God is going to take care of me in this, right? That's what's going to carry us. And so having, having that confidence and leading with faith, not fear, he goes on, th- verse 31, Therefore, don't be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. So what he's saying is like, you need those things, right? You need to eat. You need to drink. There's essentials, okay? These needs, like, it's not like God's like, you don't need those things. No, you do. And he knows you need those, right? I think that's very comforting too. The difference is what do the Gentiles do? They seek after those things because their trust is in those things. Their dependency is in those things, It's not in the Lord. It's a trust knowing God's got this. He's going to take care of me. He's got this. Whatever it is that you're going through here today, you're dealing with, we we need to take a step and and just say, God, I know you have this. A step of faith. That's faith. It's not wonder. I wonder if you've got this. I don't know. I hope. I sure hope that worked. I sure hope that prayer worked. But it's believing in faith. No, God, I know you have this. You're a good God. I trust you with it. And he goes on, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So the question here this morning is this, is what are we seeking first? Do we wake up in the morning seeking his kingdom? We wake up in the morning going, God, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord. I'm, we're seeking him, actively seeking him in every area of our lives. So what happens often is when trials hit, situations hit, do, do you go down to your knees in prayer? Or do you start looking around like this? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh no, oh no, right? And that's really where it starts. 
Like, what's our response to those situations? Here's, here's the truth, and I want to close with this here today. Um, often it's the things that we fear the most. Those are the areas that we often trust God the least. We, we just can't shake it. I can't shake it. It's often an indicator of, do I trust God with it? If it's got such a tight grip on me, why am I not able to give it to him? Do I believe that he's good? Do I believe that he has me? Do I believe that he's in full control? Do I believe his word? And so I want to say here this morning, church, is that ultimately um, you can't stop every fear from trying to attack and, and come, come against, but you can prevent it from becoming a part of you and really gripping your spirit and becoming a spirit of fear on your life. We're going to have things. You know, the Bible says, uh, in this world, you will have trouble. So it's not like we're living in this, you know, everything's butterflies and rainbows. You know, everything's just always good, right? You know, you accept Jesus and, and then you have no problems. No, that's not what we're promised, right? In this world, you will have trouble. We live in a fallen, sinful, broken world. Yearns. For God. The earth yearns for God, groans for God. We live in a fallen, sinful, broken world who needs Jesus. And so in this world, that's, we will have trouble. But he says, but take heart. Jesus says, take heart for I have overcome the world. Meaning that again, we put our trust. The battle's already been won. Ultimately, the battle has already been won. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes here this morning? I'm going to dismiss this. We're going to close out here today. And, uh, I want to pray for some of you in here today who you feel like you, you're holding on to some of those weights and a fear. And maybe, again, it's something that, that you look back, generational fear that's just passed on to you from prior generation that you hold on to, that you've, you've had a grip on, and you want it to stop with you. Or maybe it's something that you've picked up, and it's just like, I've been in a bad habit of just always worrying. I'm not giving it to God. I'm not really trusting him with it. I'm always worst case scenario. If that's you here today, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that we would, we'd lay that spirit of fear down the foot of the cross and that we'd give it to Jesus. And so Father God, I lift up your church here today. I thank you for each and every person who's here. You know, you know their hearts, you know their thoughts, everything about each and every one of us. You know the depths of who we are, Lord. And you know exactly what it is that they're facing right now, the specific situation that they're going through. I imagine, Lord, there's people right now who have a specific thought, just a fear, a worry that cripples them, that continues to pop back up in their mind on a consistent basis. There's no specific words, Lord, that I can say. I invite the power of your Holy Spirit to speak to them right now in whatever season they're in, whatever they're walking in. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, they'd be set free here today. They would lay that down at your feet. They would choose to, to lean in faith and to really trust in you, God. They would lean on you, Jesus. We'd stop looking for answers on social media. We'd stop looking for answers on the news outlets. We'd stop looking for comfort in all the wrong places. And we would truly lean on you right here and right now to bring us that comfort. I, I ask, Lord, for a lightness again on the church, a lightness in the lives of your people. Um, I, I want to speak right now, Lord, for some of the people in here today. Maybe they have high school students or kids youth that are dealing with anxiety, heavy weight, de dealing with going, going to class and, and all, these, all these things that have just, you know, been creeping in. I, I pray you would give them courage, Lord. You would do what only you can do. You'd minister to their spirit right now. Even people who aren't here this morning, uh, your Holy Spirit would go, go b beyond this room and would speak into the lives of those people right here and right now that you'd wrap your arms around those kids, Lord. We, we rebuke um, anxiety in Jesus' name because it doesn't have authority over our lives. It doesn't have authority over, over any life in here because we know it's not from you. 
And I just believe that there's people in here today who you're dealing with extreme anxiety. And I'm asking the Holy Spirit would heal you of that right here and right now. We, we receive that, Lord. We believe that you can. So we invite you in right now, minister to our, our spirits here this morning. God, I thank you for what you're doing here today. Thank you for speaking to us. I thank you, Lord. We are going to experience a lightness again. We're going to, we're going to have new joy. Um, I thank you for new joy in families. Um, new smiles happening again, Lord, in, in homes, dads and moms. Uh, just, just a lightness from stress. And no matter the circumstances, Lord, we just declare your peace that surpasses all understanding. We ask that you would guard our hearts and our minds. Thank you for what you're doing here today.